Hey everybody, Bubba the Vulture is back again. It's time for more Let's Play Dream Daddy. Last time, we tried to help out our college roommate, Bro Craig, find a capybara, and it just didn't go the way that we wanted it to. Then we walked Mary home, which involves a lot of autosaves. I'm just now realizing how many friggin' Auto saves this game decides that uh, it needs to drop on us. Seems like it's maybe chopped some out in the middle there. I don't know. Anyway, let's load up Dad Book. Always try your best at everything. I mean, generally speaking, sure. I mean, the difference in the amount of uh, work is involved in putting in a half-ass job and a whole-ass job is less than uh, you might expect. At the very least, just try to be good. You know, don't take on something that you intend specifically to not do well. Anyways, we've done a hang with Matt, with Craig. We've done a hang with everybody. We've done a number. We've done a secondary hang with uh, Matt and Craig here. So let's uh, step back here. We'll go ahead and, uh, I guess, as I can best recall, I'll try and uh, go around and maybe do a second Dream Daddy uh, Dad Discovery. Uh, on all these folks, middle school teacher, high school teacher, writers of scholarly articles. Mm, oof. If you're on here to tell me if that my son put a cherry bomb in your trash, I know what I'm sorry. Let's drop him another note. I don't know that we're aligned intellectually. You know what I mean? I may just be too common for his refined tastes, but uh, we shall see. Use your hips when throwing. What are you throwing? Maybe a shot, but... I should take uh, Hugo up on his offer to hang out. I had a lot of fun with him at the aquarium. Type out a message to him on dad book. Hey, still want a cheese board? Oh shit, that's right, he wanted a cheese board. I fucking love a cheese board. Oh, and as I probably mentioned when we went on the date before and he mentioned this, I especially love a cheese and charcuterie board. Colin is still being a humongous shithead. He won't stop sending the same picture of Jackie Chan in a mesh shirt to the printer, and it's a nice picture, but it's wasting all my paper. Whoops, sorry. Met that for another teacher. But seriously, he's insufferable. There's pictures of Jackie Chan everywhere. I type back. Save a couple for me, my Jack Chan scrapbook. It's a little light on content, and I think this would really round it out. Ha! Huh. Let me get back to you after class ends. Stand up from the computer and stretch. Jackie Chan, guys. Go watch some Jackie Chan movies. Watch some, like, Hong Kong... Like, like some... Let's say, like, late 80s, early 90s Jackie Chan movies. Watch some pre-Shanghai Noon Jackie Chan movies. That is some good stuff. He was still doing all of the coordination and directing of all the stunts and everything. And, anyways, well, I guess there's only one thing to do now. And they would do things in a continuous shot. It was amazing. Dad nap. Oh man, one of the advantages of working at home is if you're on break and you eat fairly quick, you can just lie down for just a short period of time. 
one of the advantages of doing that in this home in particular is that uh, sometimes when you do that, Hazel will just hop up on you and uh, cuddle up. And it's the most adorable. Well, I think usually she does that after work if I lie down on the couch. But I hop on the couch and turn on some Antiques and Rogue Warrior for background noise. I do not like background noise when I'm trying to nap. I got this ornate cabinet from a yard sale for $5 in 1982. To be told that it once belonged to a Confederate general is a huge surprise. This will feed my tribe for weeks. I really like the way the appraiser's voice echoes through the mouthpiece of his leather armor bondage gear. Maybe this is that ASMR thing Amanda keeps telling me about. I drift off to sleep. I'm jolted awake by a dead book message from Hugo. Hey, sorry about that. Colin's in the principal's office now. He says he knows Jackie Chan personally and that Jackie won't be happy to hear this. Uh, the principal does? Or... Colin. Fumble at a reply. I got off of work in a little while and I continue to be very serious about the cheese boards. Yeah, so am I. You and I work out the details and uh, I'm all set to meet him in a few hours. Oh, Hazel's over here just... Just doing that, like, little curl up in a ball thing that cats do, but then she just, like, reaches out a paw to stretch. It's... It's the shiz. Amanda walks in the door just as I'm about to leave. What's up, Buttercup? Just getting home from school? Where are you going? Oh, I have a meeting with the board. The bard? Um, a cheese board is what I meant. I'm getting cheese with your teacher. Will you be able to fend for yourself until dinner time? Yeah, I'll have, but only if you can talk him into going easy on me for the final. Sorry, buddy, that ball's in your court. What's in my court, you ask? Just a variety of delicious cheeses, meats, and their accompanying crackers. Maybe some olives, a little bit of fig jam. Oh, this sounds great. Oh, olives. Oh, crackers. Not actually huge on the fig jam with the cheeses, meats, and cheeses. I know a lot of people love the sweet savory. It's just not... I would take them separately. Aww. Yes, yes, I get it. You're excited about the chairs. Sweetie, you'll get it one day. But now I gotta see a man about some manchego. Plays live. Walk into a quaint French diner, and Hugo weighs me down to a booth in the corner. He looks pretty tired. Long day? <sighs> Every day is a long day when you teach middle schoolers. Mm -hmm. Colin started a gambling ring. The pictures of Jackie Chan were just a cup. He's bartering in those little rubber band bracelets that he also, that are also shapes. Is that the one that parents think means sex stuff? Those ones, yeah. The reports are just the sensationalist news media capitalizing on fears of suburban parents, as usual. This is the time when real life, when uh, real life non-avatar Bobo sits Hugo down and talks to him about how the media is not a giant monolithic entity that can uh, portray a singular falsehood because they can't even get coordinated within their own organizations. <laughs> At least I hope. Yikes. Right now, I'm very ready for a foray some fine wine and some delicious cheese. A waitress stops by and takes our order for the biggest cheese plate you have. For the love of God, please just put the cheese in my mouth and recommends us some wine. Do you want a scorecard for trivia? There's trivia? Yep, we're starting in a few minutes. Pretty much everyone here is playing. Yes. We'd love to play, right, Bobo? Uh, yeah, sure. The waitress hands us a scorecard and a few pencils before leaving. Might not be much help here. I'm not very good at being smart, I guess. Come on, I doubt it'll be too hard. Bobo. 
turn to see Matt and Brian here with their daughters, looking like they're ready for trivia. They come up to our table to greet us. Hey guys, y'all here for the old question and answers game? Hey. Yep, we come here every week, with Brian and Daisy care of the team. Carmen Seed and I just here for the cheese. <laughs> Provolone 2, Lost in New York, have been reigning champions for the last month. Man, Brian's great at trivia too. That raises the stakes. Great name though. Solid team name. That's Carmen Cetus' claim to fame. It hurts me how good I am at puns. <laughs> like father, like daughter. You guys gonna give us a run for our money? Oh. We'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do to not hurt your feelings too bad. I'll destroy you. We're just here for the cheese, too. Look. I don't know why you guys are always trying to make me be competitive dad. I'm not competitive dad. Perhaps some dramatic hormonal change will occur the moment I see my child, and I will decide that I must compete in all things. Right now, I'm just happy to get mine. Don't worry about his. We're just here for the cheese, too. Listen. Trivia is great, but we all know the real trivia championships are the cheeses we ate along the way. I don't know if that's how that phrase works, but I understand and appreciate the sentiment. Ah. We'll have to think up of a good team name, but I think this will be fun. Good luck. Brian, Matt, and their daughters head back to their table. Well, I guess we need a name. Oh. Got any good ideas? Easy, breezy, beautiful, Havarti like it's 1999, Aro Monsters, <laughs> Craigslist, Swiss Connections. Um, clearly, Ah, Real Monsters made me laugh, but uh, I have a real soft spot for Havarti. Havarti is a tremendous sandwich cheese. Um, I especially like it with a nice ham. Ham and Havarti is a, is just forget any other ham and cheese sandwich you're gonna have. Just Havarti, Havarti smoked ham. Oh gosh. Oh. Mm. Ah. Yeah. So uh. Also, it's a Prince pun. So uh. That would be paying homage to uh, to Bean, who is a Minnesotan. Ah, Real Monsters is pretty cute, though. It's generationally out of uh, the range of... Well, maybe, maybe it's not. That's an old cartoon now, I guess. A very old cartoon now, I guess. But let's go with Havarti like it's 1999. Havarti like it's 1999. That'll do just nicely. Which just comes by with our cheese board and we revel in its glory. Already I can see a piece of cheddar with my name on it. I pair it with some strawberry preserves and slide into dairy-induced ecstasy. I like both of those things individually. There's such a vi fine variety of cheese and charcuterie that I'm positively overwhelmed. A quick dip into the seasoned nuts. Oh, seasoned nuts. A slice of savory yet salty gouda. Perhaps a focaccia crip crisp followed with honey and goat cheese. I'm so happy. Hugo raises his glass yes. at me. Cheers to cheese. Hey, hey. Middle-aged man in a backwards baseball cap, sunglasses, and cargo shorts jogs out the back with the frenetic energy of a radio DJ. Yeah, everybody ready for some trivia? Restaurant cheers. Oh man, looks like everyone's really into this. That's what I like to hear. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Quiz Master Quiz. My actual name is Richard. I just like alliteration. More cheers. I see some of you brought your children here tonight. That's cool. My children won't speak to me. 
<laughs> I'm just joking around. Classic quiz master Quinn humor. It's actually my wife that won't speak to me. She doesn't want kids. Let's get into some questions. The first category is literature. Oh, Hugo's got this. Excellent. You know who loved literature? My dead father. I looked up to him so much. More jokes, classic quiz master quips. Just trying to keep a light here, folks. Just like I thought my wife was the light of my life. Hugo, you got this literature stuff, right? Hey. Does Franz Kafka have the rational fear of one day waking up as a large, grotesque, insect-like creature? Interestingly, that's the one thing I know about Kafka, too. Everybody, apparently, I think it's because it's the one short story that encapsulates most of... Anyways, you guys know. Yes? This is the continent that encompasses the realms of Gondor, Rohan, Mordor, and Lothrian. Other notable sites include Isengard, the Mirkwood, and Rivendell. What is the elvish name for this continent? Now, I guess the goofy thing here is going to be that uh, Hugo doesn't know, but, like, I know a lot of English teachers, and they're all big Tolkien dorks. Or at least, big enough. Um... I'm not as big of a Tolkien dork, but I'm familiar with Endor and Hoth as being uh, planets from the Star Wars universe, so that gives me a 50-50 shot between Arenal and Lemuria. I always pick answer C in a multiple choice, right? Wrong answer, he said. Who is the writer that created Tarzan and John Carter Mars? William Alcott, Edgar Rice Burroughs, Nathaniel Hawthorne, or E. E. Doc Smith? Was it William Alcott? I don't. They're actually asking quiz questions, and we're not getting a chance to. Wait, was it Edgar Rice Burroughs? Fred Burroughs. So this is the part where I just uh, humiliate myself, I guess. Oh, oh, okay. Edmund Dantes is better known as this man. <laughs> the Count of Monte Cristo, H.G. Wells, Dante Alighieri, Frankenstein's monster. What? I actually even already forgot the name because the name didn't ring a bell. So, hmm... Oh, what do you know? Quizmaster walks around the room. I think he's doing crowd work. He stops by mine and Hugo's table. Whoa, nice cheese plate you got there. Th thank you? How's that cheese tasted, big guy? Um, good. <laughs> Great! Cheese used to be my favorite food, but I developed a lactose intolerance later in life. I'm sorry to hear that. I also developed clinical depression. Oh. But people don't tell you to just get over your lactose intolerance, right? Nobody's like, have you tried exercising to get rid of your debilitating dairy allergy? Or you just need to choose not to let your throat close up when you eat brie. Yeah. Quizmaster Quinn has a strong point here that you should all take to heart, but... Uh, uh. Anything? Does that scan? I'm trying to workshop my routine here. Quizmaster Quinn wanders off to another table. Who wants to start the next round? More cheers from the audience. The next round is cinema. Oh man, I love movies. Sometimes I'll retreat into them for days on end because obsessing over a fictional universe is easier than engaging with my real emotions and problems. Frodo Baggins, am I right? 
Is he okay? Um, Frodo? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure he goes back to the Shire at the end. I think it's just his character, I, I hope. How's your cinema? Mm, spotty. I don't know a lot about movies, but if there are any questions about bad horror movies, I could be of service. That's an interesting one. It's a bit of a guilty pleasure. In Return of the Jedi, what does Luke ask Leia if she remembers? Um, she asks him if uh, she remembers their mother because uh, she was kind but sad. What entertainer makes a fourth wall breaking appearance in the film Gremlins 2? Oh, this is Hulk Hogan. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm fairly really great at the movies. <laughs> How terrible. He's like, hey, this is movie theater, brother. <laughs> you, you Gremlins gotta stop messing with the projector, dude. <laughs> That's just big man. Which of these 80s horror movies does not feature an Indian burial crab as part of its setting? Uh, Shining, Within the Woods, Poltergeist, or Pet Cemetery? Um, I mean, I don't know, so this is going to be a guess. Looks like we're doing pretty well, but we're neck and neck with Brian and Matt's team. Those guys are pros. Power pros. Look over to the table, we give them a friendly but competitive nod. I lock eyes with Brian. He gets a much sterner nod. God damn it, Bobo. And the next category is wrestling. Okay, we're totally boned. The hell we are, Bobo. Hugo grabs my arm. Wait, I got this. Huh? Man, you know who I want to wrestle with? Literally anyone. I crave human interaction. Please put me in a chokehold. Please, it has been so long since I've been held. I can only process my emotions by making jokes out of them. I... Let's start the quiz. Remember that this is the lightning round. The first people to answer get the points. Oh boy. I wonder if this is actually going to be timed. I look over to Hugo. He's focused. He's in it to win it. Question one. This was the original name of Stone Cold Steve Austin in his debut for the WWE. Oh, for the WWE, who's the ringmaster. Hugo's hand shoots up. Yes, the enthusiastic one over there. Steve Austin debuted as the ringmaster. I mean, in WWFE, yes. Oh. That is correct. Points to Havarti like it's 1999. Oh. Next question. This city was the location of the first ever WrestleMania. Shoot, I only ever remember the third one. Was the first one an MSG? I remember the third one was at Pontiac Silverdome, brother. Yes. Hugo's hand shoots up again. Yes, the one who looks like he has known the answer for his entire life. Hmm. The first WrestleMania was held in New York, New York, Madison Square Garden, 1985. Oh, I guess I did know it. Oh, right. Another correct answer for Hervardi like it's 1999. Apparently Hugo and I are way more bonded than I thought. Hugo's destroying these questions. He's so passionate about this. I've never seen him act like this before. It's honestly... Kind of hot. Ooh, a tough one. This title match went down in history as the shortest match at WrestleMania to date. That is a tough one. I genuinely don't know the answer to that one. I know the shortest uh, title reign in history went to... Jeez, uh, was that Mr. Bob Backlund? Or uh, was it... Uh, Big Daddy Cool Diesel. <laughs> it was a match between them. It was weird. Hugo jumps up more excited than I've ever seen him. Ah. Chavo versus Kane! Aw, oh, jeez. They had to bury Chavo that fast. I love Chavo. 
<sighs> Chavo, if you're looking for Chavo these days, you can find him on Lucha Underground, or if you're off you got Netflix, he appears on a couple of episodes of Glow. He was actually the trainer for uh, for the girls. For the girls, for the actresses on the show. Ooh, sorry, Bucko. But that is incorrect. The answer is actually Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus at WrestleMania 28. Oh, that's weird. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. No, that's absolutely wrong. The real record is Chavo Guerrero versus Kane, WrestleMania 4, 24th, March 30th, 2008. Kane took down Chavo with one choke slam and pinned him for the three count. I will not stand for this travesty. Hey, man, I'm just reading from the card here. I don't actually write these. Well, you're still wrong. What are you, my ex-wife? The crowd erupts in laughter. Hugo blushes. He retreats back into his chair. Ah. Fine. Wow, Hugo seems really fired up about that. Where did he get this encyclopedic knowledge of wrestling? How do you know so much about wrestling? <sighs> Who I... You know, you just pick stuff up. That sounds suspect, but it seems like he doesn't want to talk about it. I turn my attention back to the quiz master. <laughs> the quiz whiz. He's wearing a brown turtleneck and sneaking up behind me. <laughs> That'll make sense to one, maybe two people. All right, all right, all right. It looks like we're down to the final category, and it's a close one between Provolone 2, Lost in New York... Brian and Matt High Five, and Havarti like it's 1999. You go and I high five. We look over to Brian and Matt, Carmen Sita, and Daisy all playfully give us thumbs down and stick their tongues out. I ate a big chunk of cheddar without breaking eye contact just to show them how serious I am. The final category is Cool Animals. Animals, so huh? I never could take care of another living thing. Hell, I could barely take care of myself. <laughs> I'm falling apart. Anyway, here's the questions. The Canary Islands were named after what kind of animal? Um, Canary Islands were named after birds, presumably. Wrong. Wrong. Oh no. What was the last animal that appears in the dictionary? Zonkey? <laughs> I think I would have heard of the Ziziava because, uh, you know, Scrabble. Oh no. oh no. What mammal has the thickest concentration of fur in nature? Keep rocking, baby. Thickest concentration of fur, right? I mean, those platypi look like they got thick fur, but uh, otters, it's got to be pretty uh, dense because, uh, you know, they keep it so slick. All right, I'm just going to come around and collect your scorecards and we'll see who came out on top. Remember, the winning team gets a $25 gift card to Phil's Auto Care. If you need a car part, Phil's will fulfill all your needs. Everyone oohs and ahs. God, I want that gift card. The quiz master goes in the back to tally up the score. I pick at what's left of our cheese plate. There's a bit of brie here that tastes absolutely divine and a cracker with a little bit of honey and dried apricot. No, cheeses, fruits, separate. It's just me, guys. Enjoy your fruits and your cheeses however you want to enjoy them. Hey! So what are your plans after our big win? Hmm, I'll probably retire. Take a man to somewhere tropical. Drink something out of coconut. I always wanted to do that. What about you? Probably take my winnings to Colin's gambling ring. Bet it all on black. Walk out of there with more rubber bands in the shape of animals than I know what to do with. Old, but I like your style. Mm. 
You want the last piece of Avarti? <gasps> you said it. You said it, Posto. Nah, that's all you. You definitely earned it. After a couple of minutes, the Quigged Master jogs back into the room. Everyone immediately quiets down, waiting with bated breath for the results. Who will win the coveted gift card? And strange as it sounds, I believe that is the correct spelling for bated breath in that in that sense. I really hope it's us. Hey, everybody, we've had a great night. Lots of goofs, lots of laughs, a little bit of light crying in the back, but that's neither here nor there. It was a close game, but the winner of tonight's trivia contest is... Havarti like it's 1999. Come on down and get your gift card for Phil's Auto Cares, where Phil nominal services... God, I can't do this anymore. Please just take the gift card. I motion for Hugo to go get the gift card, and he shyly slinks out of the booth to grab it. He pauses for a moment and gives the quiz master a hug with a few pats on the back. The quiz master sobs just a little. What? <laughs> some dark entity appeared behind him. I just saw some shadowy figure behind him. I don't know what happened. It might have been Matt based on his color? I don't even know. Palette. I just, it's weird. Hugo makes a victory lap back to our table and gives me a high five. Havarti like it's 1999 is unstoppable. Havarti like it's 1999 is great. May Havarti like it's 1999 reign for a thousand years. Hey, great work, guys. Yeah, I think that's what it was. I just saw like the, the sort of dark brown and uh, maybe the, the the blue. Then again, it could have been just the shape of some demon back there. <laughs> also, his dreads made sort of for an odd shape behind uh, this character that I was not expecting it to be. You guys did awesome. Will we be seeing Havarti like it's 1999 again next week? I look over at Hugo, who smiles. Maybe so. We make a pretty good team, huh, Hugo? Hey! Hugo blushes. Hugo and I walk back toward our cul-de-sac, basking in the glow of our wind and nursing our cheese-filled bellies. Man, we crushed it in there. Hey! Finally, enduring the screams of young children for years on end has paid off. I will take my half of this gift card and use it to purchase many, many air fresheners for my car, which Ernest refuses to stop vaping in. I think I'll use my half to buy at least two tire pressure gauges to place in different parts of my garage. You never know when you're going to need one, and I prefer to have them within arm's reach. For $25, if I'm taking half of it, uh, for twelve fifty, I would probably just buy one really nice tire pressure gauge. If you get the kind that's actually like a rotary dial, those are very good. Um, I mean, typically. The pen ones, not only are they hard to read, but they're notoriously inaccurate. So uh, do yourself a favor. Get yourself a high-quality tire pressure gauge. A fine plan. Shame about that one wrestling question, though. Hmm. I'm not kidding. I plan to write a strongly worded letter whoever employed that man. Come on, there's got to be a story there. Hmm. What do you mean? You didn't even stop to think. You pulled that wrestling knowledge out like you were there at the ring yourself. Oh, it's just stuff I know. I'm secretly Jonathan Coachman. I've been involved in the wrestling business for years. I mean, I'm curious because I want to know. I mean... If uh, our little avatar Bobo is not curious about it, I mean, I am. I just want to, like, if I go to any wrestling shows with one of these dads, I'm going to probably be interested in doing that. It's a fun evening of entertainment. Here you go. I figured you'd be better at lying after dealing with every kid in school for as long as you have. I... Uh, it's embarrassing. I 
I really want to know this information. You know what's actually embarrassing? Not being able to explain basic algebra to your daughter. You know what's definitely not embarrassing? Knowing stuff about wrestling. He's got a better way to ask it than I would have. I just would have been like, come on, come on. We all know how well that works. Hugo size. All right, all right. If you really want to know, just follow me. Hugo leads me to his house at the edge of the cul-de-sac. We step inside, and his house is exactly what I expected it to be. Neat and filled top to bottom with books and art. Ah. Uh, welcome to my home. I'm sorry it's so messy. His house is actually spotless. I follow him down a hallway. What are we doing? Hugo opens the door and ushers me inside. It's pitch black. He closes the door behind us. He flips a switch, and I finally understand. Oh, he collects all the figures. Curio cabinets packed with inbox wrestling action figures line the walls, along with posters, cardboard cutouts, and every piece of wrestling memorabilia imaginable. The giant widescreen TV sits on a decked out media stand. I'm speechless. Look over at Hugo, who's hovering by the door, doing everything to avoid eye contact. Eh. It's. uh. This is really embarrassing. I mean. I really enjoy wrestling. I'm a big wrestling fan. If I saw someone's room filled with wrestling action figures, um, I wouldn't necessarily say this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I would think it was, you know, like the, the, the posters, the replica title belts. I mean, we're presuming they're replicas. If they're genuine title belts, that's pretty amazing. Um, and if he's got the media center, presumably he's got, like, collections of old cards and stuff. I mean, I would think it's pretty cool. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I mean, uh, wow, clearly they're making that a, like, thumbs down kind of wow, like the not actually enthusiastic wow. Not a lot of people have seen this, huh? It's the, like, I don't know. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Are you kidding? Look at all this stuff. This must have taken you forever to collect. I mean, it's a man's passion. Can I touch this? Go ahead. Pick up one of his replica championship belts and toss it over my shoulder. Nah, man. BTV doesn't wear a title belt over the shoulder. BTV wears it on its waist like you're supposed to. None of this over-the-shoulder stuff. Bret Hart did a lot for the world of wrestling, but his perpetual throwing the title belt over his shoulders. I feel like he was the first one I used to see doing that all the time. And it was just like, Brett, what are you doing? That's not how you use a belt. <laughs> anyway. Do you smell what I'm cooking? Hmm? I think the line is. It's meatballs. Sorry, I don't watch a lot of wrestling. I just think it's so cool how passionate you are about this. Hey! Oh, uh, yeah. I, uh, I really, really like wrestling. He's blushing so hard right now. Hugo, you bought the wrong kind of pizza rolls again. Looks like Ernest just got home. He's yelling in from the hallway. I can see Hugo immediately deflate. Oh. I told you, those pizza rolls have less sodium. I just want you to be healthy, son. Ernest comes into Hugo's wrestling room and looks around with disgust. He notices me at scoffs. I thought nobody was allowed in your precious wrestling room. I never said that. I just said you're not allowed to take the action figures out of their boxes and pose them so that they're having sex with each other. Ernest gets flustered. Yeah, well, whatever. I'm gonna go throw eggs at stuff. That fun with your stupid wrestling crap. Ernest leaves, then a moment later pops his head back in the room. And your stupid friend. Ernest storms back out of the room. I hear a door slam. 
Hugo wearily runs his hand through his hair. I don't know. Sorry about him. I'm sorry that I have to keep apologizing about him. He's just going through a phase, I guess. Mm -hmm. I try so hard to impress him, but it's obvious that no matter what I do, he hates me. And this has a thing against authority figures, and you don't get much more authoritative than a teacher dad. My ex, he gets to be the fun weekend dad, and I'm just Hugo, who makes Ernest eat his vegetables and turn in his homework all the time. Hey, you love him and you're looking out for his best interests. Take it from one dad to another. Someday he'll come to appreciate.